Hello and welcome back to the Cello Monk channel. Today we're talking about how to create a really relaxing and stress-free and effective practice session. And you'll notice that I'm wearing some PJs with wool socks because it's a little chilly out there today. And I'm wearing a, a sort of thin turtleneck, which for me, when I'm a little cold, is the perfect thing to wear because I can still move really well, but it's really warm and comfortable. So that's the first thing I would say is that if you're like me and some days you have a hard time getting the instrument out of the case, you can remind yourself that it's actually a very relaxing activity by wearing your PJs. You don't, you don't have to be at the office. If you're in a practice room, that's great too. But if you're at home, make it a really relaxing experience. I even have some tea going next to me. You can have hot chocolate, whatever you want, but try to make it almost like a little mini practice spa experience. The second thing I'd say that's really significant is that physical tension leads to mental anxiety. There's a really, really direct relationship. Actually, it's kind of a circular relationship because that tension can cause anxiety, but also then mental anxiety causes tension as well. So it's a fascinating uh, feedback loop, but make sure that you're physically really relaxed and the chances of you having a stressful practice session will go down immensely. Part of that means that your music stand, if you're using a music stand, should be high enough that your spine is neutral when you look at it. And unfortunately, honestly, I'd say 99% of musicians, if you look at how they practice, their music stand is down low enough that it starts to pull their entire body downward, which is very, very stressful for the body, it leads to long-term physical tension and again, mental anxiety actually. So make sure that your music stand is high and that physical relaxation is a priority for you. Even if you're practicing something that's really, really difficult for you, remember that tension is not gonna help and that's gonna just make it a more stressful experience all around. So stay physically relaxed. The third big thing I would say is that make a mental shift where instead of thinking of practice like you're testing to see what your abilities are or you're sort of trying to impress yourself or like you're absolutely trying to nail the shift and no matter what, you're gonna be frustrated until you nail it. Those kinds of attitudes don't really lead to great playing, um, at least not very effectively. And you'll have a way better time if you think of practicing like research. And in that sense, nothing can go wrong. If you play something that's too high, you know, you miss the overshift, that's as helpful to know as if you nail the shift perfectly, because it helps you figure out exactly what it feels like to do it perfectly. Um, so there's really, if you think that like research, there's nothing that can go wrong. It's only the amount of data that you're going to have to collect. Just think of practicing like data along those lines. Focus and quality of presence are really important for practicing. They're going to make your practicing more effective, way more effective per hour. But also it's very zen-like and very calming to have a great quality of presence. If you haven't read the classic sort of uh, sports psychology performance book, The Inner Game of Tennis, it's really incredible. But one of the things he talks about in there, I think Timothy Galway is his name, um, he talks about consciousness being like a light and that if you have just a light bulb on that's diffuse, it's gonna fill the room sort of indiscriminately. It's gonna just shine outward and be generally light. But you can also focus that light onto something very specific and it'll be much brighter on that one thing, but almost everything else is gonna fall away. That lesson is extremely valuable for practicing. So if you're practicing your intonation, um, first of all, you'd have to know that they're multiple ways you can play out of tune, but we'll get to that in a different <laughs> different video. But let's say that you figured out that the reason you're out of tune is that you can't really remember how far apart first and third finger are right here. Okay, so you narrow it down to that problem. That in itself is significant to figure that out. But if I'm gonna practice that, I'm gonna focus my entire existence, my entire being into living in these fingers and I will feel nothing else really when I'm playing. So all I'm doing is calmly living inside that body part. If I'm doing something else, um, like trying to do a certain shift, um, I'll try to live inside my elbow and, fi and figure out what that feels like. Um, Let's say that that shift is also going poorly. I want to remind you that 
you know, the importance is to be a scientist and learn from everything. So let's say I was way too high, but I was very relaxed. That's good. You know what I don't want to see? Is getting to the correct pitch, but doing it in a tight way, because that will never lead to greatness. That kind of playing, you're always going to be stuck in the style of playing where you're tight, and you're never going to really feel what it's like to let go and actually let things happen. It's a totally different way of playing. So to sum it all up, be comfortable physically, get in the right garb for whatever day it is, and make, remind yourself that it's not that stressful of a job, <laughs> or it doesn't have to be. So get comfy, and then make sure you're Music stands at a good height so that your body is neutral. Relaxation is really key. Physical relaxation all the time, very important. Make that mental shift where you're thinking as, of practicing as research and therefore all of it is useful every day. It's not as if you have a terrible day of research. You know, that, that doesn't really happen. Um, so that's significant. And then uh, as a subset of that, I guess, make sure that you're very, very focused and and aware of what you're learning and what you're researching and kind of have a cool, calm, collected atmosphere about yourself so that, again, even if something goes wrong, you're learning from it in a mildly interested way, but you're not upset when it goes poorly. I wish I would have figured out some of these things earlier because when I was a teenager, I really did get really angry sometimes when things weren't working. And I think it, probably all of us can relate to that. If you're a musician, we've all worked so hard that we've had days like that, but moving forward, Try to remember that practicing doesn't have to be that stressful, and the more effective it is, the less stressful it is because you can sort of feel that it's being useful. And I think when we get angry, it's really the subconscious manifestation of the, the knowledge that we're, we're doing something wrong and we're kind of getting our head, you know, smacking it against the wall because we're not getting anywhere. That's what makes us frustrated. So create a better environment and you'll enjoy practicing a lot more and probably improve a heck of a lot faster. So looking forward to the next one already, and thanks so much for listening.